OK, Ross, also today uh, the coalition is ahead of Labor in key battlegrounds of New South Wales and Queensland in the latest news poll. The political contest is tightening, so to speak. Um, why do you think there's been this shift in sentiment? Because of what I was talking about before, people want action, they don't want words. They don't want to say, oh, here's what we'll do, here's what we all think of doing, here's what we've done. They want to see action in their lives. They want to see prices getting cheaper, they want to see affordability, they want to see the changes that Labor have been spruiking meaning something to them. And it's not happening. It's not happening in regional Australia, it's not happening in New South Wales, and even the other states are coming to a, a far closer uh, election than they thought they would be. I think that's a good thing. I think a competitive uh, election next time will bring a, a better policy for Australia and more meaningful change to mum and dad's wallets as we go forward. But it's tough. I, we sit in the centre all the time and we hear about Labor's done this and this and this, but it hasn't done anything for mums and dads. It hasn't done anything to change their lives for the better. And these people are getting angry now. They're saying, you keep telling me I've got it so good because you've done all this. And they're not buying it anymore. And they will get angrier. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg for Labor. Well, I mean, when we talk about the coalition, I mean, they have gained some support, if we can go and trust the news poll here, but they are lacking support among younger voters. Do you think that the coalition has the ability to gain trust of younger voters? Yeah, I, I think they do. Yeah, every time I interact with Peter Dutton and his crew, he, he gets this. He's been a policeman on the front lines of Australia. He's in, you know, been in uh, regional areas as well as Brisbane. He understands what mums and dads are getting there. And when we come from this, this phase of what we want and what we like and, and words and woke and everything like that, when it comes to down what really matters, paying for the things we've got, making an easier life, keeping people safe, Peter will really, really come through and I think that will come closer to the election when people have to make a choice about feeling good about themselves or actually knowing that they are safe and knowing that they have a future. And young people are the same. There's all these sorts of things, this noise at the moment, we've got this very strong uh, movement out there, you know, the Israeli-Palestinian um, war. We've got all these things going on that are virtue signalling with the, that are big outside Australia. When it comes to vote, when it's not a free poll about what we think and what we hope, when it really comes to what matters, I think the coalition will do very well amongst the young people. Uh, Ross, you've said here um, a few times now that Labor, you know, have said that they're going to do things and there's a lack of action and a, a lack of detail, I guess, but you could say the same about the nuclear policy at the moment. When will the costings be released? Is the lack of detail hampering ability uh, to sell the policy to voters? No, I think quite the opposite. I think giving in bite-sized, digestible chunks, this is the policy about what will go, which, what down there, including nuclear in the energy mix. I think you'll next see the next phase is how that fits in with renewables and gas and other technologies. You'll see that whole energy mix and then you'll see the costings. I think what's happening is a very solid way of giving the information as the community, as the electorate can consume it, can understand it and get a real grip to it. And here in the Hunter Valley where I am today, people in the Hunter Valley can't wait for the opportunity to get this thing going, create the jobs of tomorrow for a hundred years. It'll be a great opportunity. I think you'll see as we release more and more in these digestible chunks, it will happen. So just confirming exactly when will we, will we see the costings? I wish I was in the room that decided that. Unfortunately, I'm not, but uh, you'll see it more. You'll see it well before the election. You'll see all of these things come out in, in packages that we expect the people to be able to understand and question. Because if you come out with everything all in one hit, one big, you know, complex, integrated uh, thing, people don't understand what to ask. We've come out and said nuclear will be part of our mix. They've asked questions. The communities where they will be cited are asking questions. They're interacting with us. The next phase of the mix, people will be able to ask those questions. And then when we come with the costings, they'll be able to be scrutinised. But I do note that in uh, a lot of uh, media today, they're talking about the government's gen cost report. You know, just about uh, four, uh, 20 kilometres to my uh, right is where the Port Stephens offshore wind farm is going to go. Bowen and the government did not include any costings of offshore wind or connectivity in their gen cost plans. And that's, that's what you're talking about. When you've got a government and all the resources of government and the plan they're currently undertaking, not talking about implementing, when they won't cost those things that they are planning on doing, that's when we should be asking the questions, why aren't you including the cost of what you're doing, not what you plan to do?